fire arrows, often referred to as flaming arrows. They are portrayed in the movies as one of the most commonly used tactics amongst archers, but of course, they were not. Flaming arrows simply make for great cinematics. They provide a visual aid, making what would be a blur of thin wood flying through the sky a bit more exciting, particularly at night. So fire arrows in the movies mostly just exist because they look cool. That's right! Every time they make a Robin Hood movie, they burn our village down! But were there real situations where flaming arrows were used? Yes, but let's quickly highlight how they were not used. They definitely were not used to shoot at people to do some kind of fire damage bonus. If anything, a fire arrow might be less likely to kill you. A nice burnt arrowhead would be less bacterial. Furthermore, fire arrows have to be shot more slowly as to not extinguish the flame. Many have arrowheads or cloth wrapping that make them less aerodynamic, and these arrowheads are less likely to pierce armor. Typically, these arrows are moving slower, are bigger, and brighter, therefore easier to block or dodge. For the archer, fire arrows are also a pain. They require time and care to prepare. They further risk damage to a bow or hand as the flaming arrow is drawn back. Also remember the arrow is wood and can also burn and break. Creating a reliable flaming arrow is not as simple as wrapping the end in an oil-soaked cloth. Once an arrow is shot from a bow, it can be easily extinguished with the speed of the arrow's flight, blowing it out like a candle, so these wrappings often had to be huge. I see you, you little bastards! I see you! Flaming arrows were primarily used to satellite thatched structures. The most successful arrows used for this purpose were made with a cage head, where incendiary material could be more securely packed inside. A cage at arrow could be packed with different flammable materials such as oil, animal fat, dead wood, sulfur, resin, or tar. Gunpowder could also be used. The Chinese created both arrows that could burn and be launched using gunpowder as early as the 9th century. Satchels of gunpowder were strapped to arrows that could hopefully set fire to anything they struck. The greatest chance to light a roof on fire came from very hot, slow-burning material Sometimes just a smelting hot arrowhead might be enough to burn down a structure if it didn't cool too quickly in flight. Further uses for flame arrows could be to ignite sails or rigging on ships. They can be used to send signals, and if fired en masse, might frighten an enemy. What about the old setting a field on fire trick? For this to be successful, you'd need an incredible amount of oil or tar, scarce commodities during medieval times, and you'd need the ground and weather to cooperate. Most of this oil would evaporate, dry up, or be absorbed by the earth. You could store it in straw bundles, but if it was hit, there's no reason for the flames to engulf everyone around. Flammables at the time weren't kept under great pressure, and don't cinematically explode, destroying walls and gates. An opposing army won't just catch on fire without they themselves being doused in oil. This could be possible during a siege, but again this sort of pitch or tar was a scarce commodity. To end the video with a real-life example of using flaming arrows, here's athlete Antonio Ribolo lighting the Olympic torch in 1992. Antonio's arrow didn't land directly in the cauldron, but passed over top the gaslit torch which was set to light even if the arrow failed. It was considered a beautiful success. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this video on fire arrows. If you happen to be a fire arrow and want to add anything on the subject, please do so in the comment section. And we'll see you next time.